Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is the TARDIS Team Adventure book tag. This is an original bookish Doctor Who tag that I came up with on a sleepless night at half past four in the morning. In this tag I am going to create a Doctor Who story using characters, places and things from literature. I want you to all play along if you are even somewhat familiar with Doctor Who. Grab pen and paper or open up your note app on your phone or whatever. I want you to be answering the questions along with me and then tell me what story you have come up with in the comments. If this sounds a bit confusing, don't worry, it's going to be immediately obvious how this tag works. Let's get straight into the questions. Question one. Which book character is your doctor? So I want you to pick a character from any book that you think would make a good doctor in Doctor Who. I personally am not a very picky Doctor Who fan. I usually like whichever doctor is currently going and I don't really have any doctors I seriously dislike. Yes, even Colin Baker has his moments. But I do like a doctor that is a little bit grumpy, that isn't immediately likeable and that doesn't try to be liked. So I quite like the Peter Capaldi Doctor, but my all-time favourite Doctor is probably Christopher Eccleston. And the Doctor that I have chosen from literature for this question is someone who's also kind of grumpy, doesn't take any crap from anyone, doesn't really like getting involved in situations, but is very good at solving problems. And that is Granny Weatherwax, from the Terry Pratchett Witches novels. Uh, if you are familiar with her, she is basically the image of an old grumpy witch. She gets dragged into stories that she doesn't really want to participate in, but when it comes to it, she's a very good problem solver and she has her heart in the right place. I think she would make a fantastic doctor uh, in the lineup of doctors that we've had so far. She wouldn't really be like anyone we've seen and she would be an unlikely but very convincing hero of her story. Question two. Which book characters are the Doctor's companions? Pick between one and three characters. As you might know, the Doctor is known to travel with one companion quite often, sometimes with two, and on occasion there have even been three companions in the TARDIS. For my answer I have picked two companions. The first one is a very typical Doctor Who companion, I should think, and that is Elizabeth Bennet from Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. She wants to break away from her Regency society and travelling in the TARDIS gives her the perfect opportunity to do that. We know she loves travel, we know she loves exploring things, we know that she prefers rocks and mountains to men, and there are a lot of rocks and mountains in space, so she quite happily goes exploring with the Doctor. She functions as a little bit of a translator in a way because the Doctor basically has no manners and Elizabeth Bennet, while obviously speaking her own mind, is very well versed in a sort of polite conversation. So when the Doctor and her edginess sometimes make her a little bit unpopular, Elizabeth Bennet is there to smoothen things out and to get information out of people by employing her wit and charms. Our second companion is Dr. Frankenstein from Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and he's a little bit more of a reluctant traveller. He doesn't really like being uh, underneath the command of the doctor, he doesn't have a whole lot of respect for older ladies, but he is a scientist and he has never seen so many extraordinary things as he has when traveling with the doctor. He is grumpy and he is quiet and deep down he really resents being only the second doctor in the TARDIS. Uh, he is used to being the eminent scientist, he's used to being the authority in scientific questions, and well, the Doctor just knows more than he does. So he suffers a little bit from that, and he also suffers from the fact that Granny Weatherwax refuses to call him by his title and instead insists on calling him Frankie. Question three. 
which time and place from a book is the TARDIS travelling to in this episode of Doctor Who. And I have chosen as the setting for this story the Edwardian London from Howard's End by E. M. Forster. Why? I think it's a fantastic setting. There's uh, lots of hustling and bustling going about. We are pre-World War I, but there is a sense of newness in the air. And specifically thinking about the places in which Ian Forster's novels are set, they usually have some sort of clash of societies or clash of classes. And I think it would be interesting to see how our TARDIS team gets on in Edwardian London. Let's move on to question four. Which book characters do the team first encounter there? Choose between two and four characters who are actively resisting the villain's evil plan. So at this point we don't know what the villain's evil plans are, but as soon as the Doctor and her team land in Edwardian London, they meet the following three characters. Jane Eyre from Jane Eyre, Maxim de Winter from Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, and Dr. Watson from the Sherlock Holmes stories. They meet these three and immediately get drawn into this plot. All they know, Dr. Watson heard it from Sherlock Holmes, all they know is that someone wants to steal an artifact from the British Museum. Uh, we don't know at this point why Jane Eyre or Maxim de Winter are involved. I imagine Maxim de Winter kind of just stumbled across this group of people, but now, for whatever reason, <laughs> I may not have thought this through all the way, but now for whatever reason they are trying to warn the authorities in the British Museum that there is a plot to break into it. Maxim de Winter is the unquestioned leader of this little resistance group. His motivations are unclear, he's very quiet, he doesn't seem to be fully convinced by the whole fighting for the good of the people thing. Dr. Watson is in there obviously with heart and passion and his trusted gun and Jane Eyre, quiet but serious, seems to have the most inner conviction to fight the villain and she is really the driving force behind this trio. But let's move on to question number five, which is which book character is the villain of this story? And I have chosen a main character who I think would make a very good villain, and some would even argue is a very good villain in his, in his own story, and that is Dorian Gray from The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And what a beautiful villain does he make, gorgeous, mysterious, eternally youthful. He has it all, except whatever he wants to steal from the British Museum. We don't know what yet, but it is probably of extraterrestrial origin. Before we get back to Dorian Gray, let's move on to question number six. Which literary group, species, nation or community has been recruited to be the villain's army? And Dorian Gray has teamed up with the most unlikely species of creatures from literature, and that is the Triffids from the Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. The Triffids are a species of killer plants. Their sting can blind a person, they can kill people, and they can also walk. They move on their three little legs. And uh, they look kind of harmless. If you saw them grow growing by the sides of the road, you might be a little bit intimidated by it, but it's just a plant. What can it do? Well, let me tell you, under the command of Dorian Gray, these Triffids can do a whole lot of harm. So what is the evil plan? Let's move on to question number seven. Which magical or mystical or scientific item from a book is the villain trying to steal or corrupt? And I have chosen the spinning wheel from the fairy tale Sleeping Beauty. And yes, in, in this universe, in this version of the story, the spinning wheel is being kept in the British Museum. Presumably the British stole it from its original castle. But what is Dorian Gray's intention with it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's cut to a little monologue. Maybe Dorian Gray is pacing the long corridors of his town house or his manor house in the country or something in which he elaborates on his evil plan. Well, what he wants to do is uh, steal 
the spinning wheel from Sleeping Beauty and then use it to put the rich and beautiful people of London into an enchanted sleep so that he can be the richest and the most beautiful because the whole eternal youth thing just isn't enough for him. Anyway, there's a montage and despite the best efforts of our three resistance fighters, Jane Eyre, Maxim de Winter and Dr. Watson, Dorian Gray's army of Triffids manage to break into the museum. There is clearly some sort of security issue and they steal the spinning wheel and take it back to Dorian Gray's London townhouse. Question eight, plot twist. One of your picks from question four was secretly working for the villain all along. Who is it? Remember our resistance fighters from question four were Jane Eyre, Maxim de Winter and Dr. Watson and dun dun dun, Jane Eyre has been working for Dorian Gray all along. In fact, it was her that came up with the plan for how the Triffids could get into the British Museum and she supervised the theft of the spinning wheel from the British Museum. She betrays her companions and triumphantly returns the spinning wheel to Dorian Gray. Why? We know she loves a baddie, she has terrible taste in men and her choice in this case is fatal because one story in grey has no longer any use for her he in cold blood orders one of the triffids to murder her he leaves her in the room with the triffid that is slowly closing in on her he hears her screaming and pleading but he leaves the room and closes the door and smiles to himself because he never liked her anyway so after he's had jane eyre murdered in cold blood Let's move on to question number nine. How does the doctor and team defeat the villain, secure the magical or mystical or scientific item and save the universe? Let's move on to the climax of this episode of Bookish Doctor Who. So Dorian Gray invites the rich and beautiful of London to a dinner party and a ball at his London townhouse. Elizabeth Bennet, being beautiful and convincingly rich enough, manages to snag an invite. Unfortunately, the Doctor, Granny Weatherwax, and Dr. Frankenstein don't get an invite. But Dr. Frankenstein remains at the TARDIS anywhere, where he basically locks himself up in the lab of the TARDIS and starts working on some sort of intergalactic weed killer uh, that would be strong enough to kill the entire army of Triffids. The Doctor gives Elizabeth a magical amulet that will essentially enchant Dorian and force him to do her bidding. So Elizabeth's plan is to go to this dinner party and ball and slip the amulet around Dorian Gray's neck. Elizabeth gets all dressed up and goes to the party. At the party she manages to charm Dorian Gray with her witty humour and her beauty and as they dance she manages to whip out the amulet and hang it around his neck, at which point he kind of falls into a kind of a trance. The doctor now has control over him, the doctor who's camping out in the garden outside of the townhouse. She makes him leave the ballroom, leave all the guests behind and go straight to the hidden room where the spinning wheel is hidden. So he goes up the stairs into his gigantic library, Elizabeth following along, obviously. Uh, he moves the hidden bookshelf aside and into a dark corridor, at the end of which is the spinning wheel. Because Dorian is in a sort of a trance and I guess doesn't have full control of his fine motor skills, he accidentally pricks his finger on the wheel and immediately falls asleep. Elizabeth starts panicking. She doesn't really know what to do. This was not part of the plan. The doctor comes in flying through the corridor. She had gotten on her broom, remember she is a witch, and smashed through the window in the library and followed them along the corridor until she gets to them. But she too is helpless. Dorian Gray is lying there on the cold floor, fast asleep. Elizabeth and the doctor try everything to wake him up. Elizabeth even kisses him because she has read Sleeping Beauty the fairy tale. She knows how that ends. Uh, doesn't do anything. Elizabeth kind of wipes her mouth a little bit disgustedly because she, she knows that she's just kissed an unconscious murderer. The doctor sets the spinning wheel on fire with a whip of her magic wand. Does she have a magic wand? I don't think she has a magic wand. Anyway, she sets the spinning wheel on fire with magic and when, when that burns to ashes, he's still not awake. They shake him, they slap him, 
nothing works. Then suddenly, footsteps behind them. Dorian Gray's butler bursts into the room behind them. What have you done to my master? He shrieks and pulls a gun out from his intricately embroidered waistcoat. However, he is distracted by the lifeless form of his master on the floor. So Elizabeth and the doctor jump onto the doctor's broomstick, fly out through the corridor, out of the window and escape. In the meantime, in the TARDIS, Dr. Frankenstein has managed to feed the weed killer to the Triffids. Let's not worry about the mechanics of this. Anyway, he managed to do that. They've all dried up, so the Triffids are all dead. The Doctor and Elizabeth come flying in through the TARDIS door, slamming the door behind them, and the TARDIS disappears. You know. And legend has it that to this day, Dorian Gray lies fast asleep in one of the many bedrooms of his townhouse, protected by his loyal and mysteriously never-aging butler. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it, Minerva? Wasn't that a good episode of Doctor Who? Not enough cats, you say? Anyway, but one final question, question number 10. Roll the credits. Which author wrote this episode? And I think this episode should have been written by Virginia Woolf. <laughs> Just to imagine the mood. It will be a masterpiece. It will be a masterpiece of Doctor Who history. It'd be the sort of episodes the fans could never stop talking about. <laughs> okay, that was the um, Doctor Who TARDIS team adventure tag. But before I finish this video, let me just tag some bookish Whovians. And I want to tag Amber from Amber Unabridged, Sam Dawson, Perry from Literary Literary, and Jill from The Book Bully. However, if you are a booktuber, book blogger, whatever, if you want to do the tag on Twitter, or if you want to write your own story about this, consider yourself tagged. I am quite excited to see what bookish Doctor Who stories uh, everyone comes up with. I hope you enjoyed this tag. I know it's kind of got niche appeal. I don't expect this is going to be a hugely popular video, but I really loved doing this. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye.